All right, good morning, guys. Um, my name is Dre. Uh, if you're new to these webinars, um, I'll be our host today. I'm a CSE at MoveWorks, um, and uh, I'm excited to get through this content with you. So let's go ahead and see um, maybe a little preview, I guess, of some of the things that are going to be coming up in the coming weeks. Um, you know, we've had a bit of a, I think you could call it a series of Salesforce use cases that we've gone through the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pivot now, though, to Workday. Um, so you'll see use cases in our coming schedule um, are, are prim primarily revolving around Workday. Um, you know, today we'll be discussing PTO lookups. <laughs> Next week, we'll be discussing PTO booking. So actually submitting those requests for PTO um, in chat directly. And then finally, on the 31st, um, we'll be discussing uh, Workday PTO request approvals. So again, sort of a general theme here of Workday and maybe more specifically around PTO requests. Um, I, I think I think that this will be helpful for a lot of different teams and organizations. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we're discussing specifically today. Um, again, that is Workday PTO lookups. We're going to talk about the content a little bit, um, sort of explain the use case, uh, how it works, the kind of user experience we're shooting for. And then finally, we'll pass things off to a Q&A session. You can think of this as like an office hour session. So I would ask that you uh, you know, hold on to questions or post them in the chat, and we'll address them during the Q&A portion of this call. Um, I expect the content to take around 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes or so. So we should have plenty of time for questions. With that, let's go ahead and jump in uh, to Workday PTO lookups. So specifically, I want to build motivation around why we would even want to do this. Workday is probably one of our more common uh, HR systems that we run into um, you know, across our customer base. And uh, PTO uh, is especially uh, a powerful use case for folks. Um, you know, most organizations have employees who are looking to take time off from time to time, and, and enabling them to handle their time off uh, process within chat, where they, again, already are, um, is, is just a more efficient way of handling things. So by enabling Workday PTO lookups, we can save time for employees so that way they can, you know, spend time on more uh, productive tasks. With that, let's look at the user experience that we want to build uh, for this use case. So we have our user here, Gwen, and Gwen comes to the bot and says, can you show me my upcoming PTO? And we want to be able to respond uh, intelligently uh, to that question. So we're going to build a queries use case. Again, the user's coming to the bot to ask this question, and we just need to return that data to, to them directly. There's no additional follow-up questions needed here. Uh, we're going to need to leverage an iPaaS solution or some kind of middle layer automation tool. Um, that could be a custom Python script. That could be something like Workato, which is what we'll use for our demo today. Um, it could be Power Automate. Uh, it could be a ServiceNow uh, you know, automation. There's there's many, many different ways to build this, this middle layer automation. But uh, anytime you see iPaaS, just know that right now I'm referring to Workato. It doesn't have to be Workato. So the first step that the queries use case will do uh, once it's triggered is call the iPaaS function, passing as part of that call uh, the user's email. Uh, this is data that's very easy to um, get sort of through our user ingestion, and so it's uh, we have special variables for it to pass to uh, you know other automations. Step two, uh, the iPaaS is then going to use that requester email address to get the user's worker ID in Workday. Um, the Workday APIs largely require you to pass a worker ID, so this is a necessary step and, in fact, a major reason why um, we're using an iPaaS tool today. There are some workarounds. We can talk about this a little bit later, um, but this is probably the, the best way to do it. Step three uh, is once you have that worker ID, we need to pass the worker ID again uh, in the Workday API uh, to get the time off entries of that user. Step four, we need to return those time off entries, so the iPaaS is going to send those back to the queries use case. And then finally, uh, queries will then format the response from the iPaaS tool, which is really just the response from Workday, um, for the user, for the requester to read. And you can see the sort of end result here. Um, in Copilot, you would have something formatted kind of like this. It says something along the lines of, you have a pending PTO request, um, so an indication of status from August 12th to August 16th. That's an indication of the time frame uh, for a vacation. That's the type of uh, PTO request. The request is five days. It gives you a sort of breakdown of 40 hours, which is sort of just a nice little extra that Copilot can give us. And uh, it tells you who the approver is. So that's just what we have configured for our specific use case here. Um, of course, uh, the beauty of the queries use case, you can configure any of the return data as something that's eligible for the user to read. So 
um, this is this is quite configurable. With that, let's look at the general process and uh, flow of, of how this works. Um, this chat bubble here is representative of the chat. Uh, so the user coming to chat and asking, um, you know, I need to see my upcoming PTA requests. Again, that's going to call a queries workspace use case, which will then pass the user's email address to the iPass solution. Today, that's Workado. And it will then get the worker ID by email. The API that Workday provides is their data API, uh, leverages WQL. This allows you to get the worker ID by the user's email address. Once you have the, uh, the worker ID, we need, need to go to a second step in the iPass solution. Uh, this sort of second step is, is, is uh, again, a, a core reason why we're using an iPass tool today. And we need to then get worker time off entries. And so we're going to pass the worker ID as part of the path of the API call we're making um, to the absence management API, uh, specifically the time off details uh, entries. We're then going to just get that return and just immediately pass that back to Queries Workspace, where we'll then format the response and then pass that back to the user in the same way that we saw in our user experience diagram a moment ago. So uh, I have this listed as demo, but I first want to show the Workato um, recipe that we have set up. I think that's going to help uh, sort of elucidate how this works. The trigger for our Workato recipe here uh, is an API request. Now, uh, in Workato, you have the ability to do webhooks, um, API request triggers. You also have things like polling and scheduled uh, triggers. But the, the beauty of an API request trigger is that it plugs in very well to um, Creator Studio, and it can return an HTTP status, which is important for Creator Studio to know whether or not the process was successful, which is going to dictate sort of how, it, how it's going to return its answer. Um, so in this case, we have this new API request. The only data we're passing in uh, in our request schema is this requester. The next step, of course, oh, I should mention this requester is the user's email address. So the next step then is then we're going to use the Workday data API to pass this WQL uh, query. Um, WQL is very similar to SQL. Um, in fact, I would essentially call it SQL uh, just within Workday, you know. So uh, we're going to say select Workday ID, email primary work. Really, that's the only information we really need for this to work. Um, from all workers where email primary work is, and then we're going to pass the requester email uh, in Workday as a data pill. Um, again, though, you could format this in a Python script or really any kind of automation tool you'd like. Specifically, we only expect one, so I've set things as one here. Um, so one 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 user uh, should come back, and then uh, again we only really expect one user, so one page is fine. Step three uh, is then again to take the return value here, which is going to be um, the workday ID and the email of the user, and we're going to pass the workday ID here. So we're doing this as a custom action uh, in workday with this path. So API absence management v1 uh, instance here would be the instance name of your workday instance, probably your company name, something along those lines. In this case, I've just filled this with a dummy value instance. Uh, the workers, worker ID, time off details. Once we get the uh, JSON response for this API call, Again, we just directly pass that into our return value, and that goes to Queries Studio. Once in Query Studio, uh, the you know we we organize formatting, we take care of uh, triggering, and this is very similar to any other use case that you might build using uh, a Query Studio. Um, so I'm going to skip over that for today, uh, in in the, in the sake of time, and we'll go ahead and look at the uh, demonstration. So I'm going to come to the bot. Uh, you can see I've already started a conversation. Uh, I just said hello, just to get some text on the screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask, uh, you know, can you show me my upcoming PTO? Uh, PTO, we'll just say PTO. Maybe there are requests, maybe they're already approved. I just want to know what PTO I have coming up. Again, this is going to go ahead and trigger the PTO use case that we have configured, my time off requests. And it's going to return the PTO that I have um, pending. So in this case, you have uh, upcoming PTO requests from August 12th to August 16th for a vacation. Uh, this is really the same text that we saw in our user experience diagram. Um, so there we go. That's that's the use case. You'll notice that we do have a follow-up button here. Um, view requests. This is a feature in Queries Studio uh, that allows you to sort of have follow-up actions. Um, in this case, this is going to redirect me to uh, our Workday instance to view the, the actual PTO request. Uh, I'm not going to 
click on this. Of course, today I don't need to share all of my data, but um, just know that this this button redirects to Workday. Um, this will be a little bit easier to share maybe uh, in the coming weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our slides real quick. We have a few moments left before we jump into our uh, Q&A portion of the call. So what I'd like to do um, before we move to that step is just uh, just briefly share um, some additional follow-up resources that you can use to learn or onboard to using uh, Creator Studio, how to build this use case, that kind of thing. Um, the first resource I'd like to share, because this is probably the first resource you, you should start with uh, if you're beginning with, with Creator Studio in general, is our Creator Studio Developer Certification course on our Academy. Uh, now, our Academy is uh, going to be our learning resource um, with lots of different guided training modules, step-by-step -step videos for setting up specific use cases, um, especially like example use cases that really allow you to uh, stretch out and try the different features um, in Creator Studio. And at the end of it, there's a multiple choice exam uh, to sort of, as, as it says here, test your knowledge and publicly uh, share your uh, knowledge about um, Creator Studio uh, via a certificate that you can get that you can share on LinkedIn. Finally, are our documentation and developer community. Uh, our documentation portal, you can think as our ultimate reference material for all things MoveWorks. So that includes Creator Studio, but also other features uh, about MoveWorks. You can use this as, uh, like I mentioned, a reference material. Really good resource. We also have uh, tutorials and guides. I want to point that out specifically, uh, where we have use case guides that will sort of walk you through setting up use cases. Um, I don't believe this use case is published yet, but uh, it will be there very shortly. Uh, finally, again, is our do uh, developer community. Um, this is like a forum where you can go and talk to other customers who are building similar use cases, uh, product managers and engineers who are working on the features that you're leveraging in your use cases, um, as, as well as folks like myself who are just there to answer questions and uh, are, are just general experts about um, the product in general. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us today. Have a great one. Um, we'll talk to you later. And again, keep your eyes peeled for that community post. We can ask questions and do some follow-up on that as well. Have a good one.